Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, it's John Binney. And something different today. So you asked me to tell you about my experiences of writer's block, which I had for about 15 years, and also about stepping into the leaning into the why, like why create each day. And then also perfectionism. How do you break free from perfectionism? Now, what I'm going to take you on is a journey of how I worked through my journey with, with music. And there's definitely a spirituality element to that. But really, these same principles could apply to any creativity, um, whether it's an art or whether it's just something that you want to do in your day to day work. So I hope this helps you. And I'm streaming this live on Instagram and I'll also be sharing as a recording in a podcast. I have my guitar with me as well, so it'll be good fun to, to share with you as we go. Okay, so let me tell you a bit about the, the, the problem that I faced. Um, when I was a teenager, I wrote songs on and off, and I really enjoyed that. It was, it was super fun. And then my writer's block was um, around uh, the early 2000s to, to 2017. So about 15 years, I'm not sure exactly how many, so I, I might even quote different numbers in different videos. Um, hello, thank you for joining. And so that blockage, let me explain a bit about, bit about that blockage. Music has always been in my blood. I've always wanted to create music. And what I, what I found was that every time I picked up my guitar, I would put this really high expectation on myself, which was, you're going to write something amazing. And it's going to be really good. And you're going to do it fast. I always felt like good songwriters would write songs fast. Um, you can spot all the, the kind of non-truths and in, in non-realities in some of these statements. Um, and so I'd pick up my guitar and uh, I would just like, I'd, you know, I'd start strumming a bit. And I would just maybe try and sing some vocals and I just um I just wait and see uh you know how how it would like work out and I would the the most important thing that I was doing wrong was that I would I'd very quickly give up um so maybe I'd get into like the first uh, couple of couple of chords I can feel your love I can feel your love calling me I can <laughs> but then I would like stop and I'd be like oh um, that's really annoying you know what do I do next where, where do I go with it next and and so I would stop and so there's definitely this element of kind of lack of like why I was doing it in the first place, like that overall, you know, more um, esoteric uh, reason, you know, in my life, like what was my mission? Why was I being called to create music? And then the second thing was when I started to try and create, I would really have very little self-love and um, confidence and I would just, I would give up quickly. So... <laughs> what changed? <laughs> well, the big thing that changed for me was that I, I began meditating each day. And in, so in 2017, I started my meditation and um, it was an incredible journey. Uh, and I, I, a few other things happened all at the same time. And I, I don't want to like skip through these because they're all important. You know, a lot of these things happen within a few days. So the first thing I did is I started meditating each day. My first meditation was like full of like seeing the creation of stars and planets and the energy flowing between them. And that was just so fabulous. Like I was just blown away by it. And so that, that made me so happy. It made me think, well, why don't I do this every day? Because I feel like I've tapped into the magic of the universe. And so I started meditating each day. And as I meditated each day, um, I, I heard, I remember watching on YouTube and I, I don't remember who it was I was watching. Maybe it was, um, 
probably was uh, Bridget Nielsen, and she's still going as a as like a, a spiritual YouTuber. And um, I remember she was talking a lot about like aliens and spirituality, and also spirit guides. And I was thinking, oh, spirit guides. I wonder what they are. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure I'd like heard of them maybe in movies and stuff like that. And so I thought, I know, I'll 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 look into it. Like, I'll I'll find out. And so in meditation, I just asked to talk to my spirit guides. And, you know, this isn't the only way that you can create, and it's not the only way that you can you can write. But what I quickly found myself doing was making space for myself. So if I was to say, like, lesson number one is, like, make that creative space for you. And that is physical, it is mental and spiritual. It is multidimensional. And so what I did was I, I'd set up, we just moved house, and I was very fortunate to have a, a garage or garage, as you'd call it. And um, in that, I set up, I started building my own music studio and I just started like a, re- a really simple mixing desk, a simple microphone and a guitar. And um, I just started each weekend um, and I'd meditate every day. And then at the weekend, I would meditate in the morning uh, first thing. And then I'd, I'd, I'd try and write a song. And I realized that there was almost this like momentum to it, like having a studio, having the things already set up. Because previously I tried like just setting them up to do music and it would take like a huge amount of time. Like it would take me about an hour to set everything up. And then every time I set things up, all the, all the sounds would be really different. And so that's also like, you know, number one or two is like having, having all your equipment set up and it includes if you're like a painter, you know, if you're, um, a poet or a dancer or a singer, like whatever you want to do, whatever you want to create, having that, that kind of sacred space, that safe space set up was a huge thing for me because it allowed me to just step into it, like physically to step into that location and feel like I'm ready to create. Okay. Then what about the hard part, right? Like what about that part where, and that's why I have my guitar with me. Um, what about that hard part when you're, you're expecting yourself um, and a hello to everyone that's joining. It's, it's lovely you're here. Um, that hard part of that kind of stage fright that I get, even though there's no one here except for my little dog, Patch. I don't know if you can see him. He's, he's very cute. There he is down there. Um, he's a papillon. <laughs> um, yeah, that hard part of like, well, what do you do when you need inspiration? So the first thing I did was I... I began like asking myself and asking my spirit guide to meditation. I was asking like, what is my purpose in life? Like what's my life mission? And it was really funny because I'd I'd never really considered that concept before that perhaps, you know, I'd chosen to come into this life for a specific reason or or reasons that perhaps I had a mission to do while I was here um, and that it it, was even a thing. And I felt like, yes, I, I I felt like creating every day had to have a theme um, and at that point I didn't even know I create songs every day, but I knew I was going to create a lot and, uh, cause I built this creative space. And so that's what I did. I, I asked, and this message kept on coming over and over, like clearly to me, which was, um, to raise vibrations, raise vibrations of, of, of people's hearts, of, of millions and billions of people's hearts. And okay, it's a bit vague <laughs> and ambiguous, but it's very positive and it's not, it's not about me, which I really like. I mean, of course, now I know more years later, it is as much about me as it is about everyone else. But it excited me more than just trying to become famous. And of course, you can choose your goal. Maybe you do want to be famous. And, that, and that's what you want to be is your primary goal when you, when you create. But just choose one. Choose one thing. And so every morning when I go in, I mean, I say it as a mantra, I I, I say it each morning, I say, um, my music raises the vibrations of billions of hearts. And I love it. (laughs) I say it out loud every morning, just before meditation. And it's like this constant feedback loop of like, I really love what I do. And there's loads of other things that have come into my life and, and that I do also now. So that's the why, like stepping into the why. You can... Um, if you're really, really not sure like what, what it is you want to do in your life, where you think your life is going or what your purpose is, um, th- there are like a series of free meditations on my website. They're called the uh, All Spirit Guide Meditations. 
there must be 20 plus now. And one of them is talk to your spirit guides. And it's about 10 minutes. And it, it's a guided meditation. And it's the same meditation I do each day. And you can either ask, you can ask your guides in that meditation for a message. And you don't need to be like super psychic or have even done, you know, meditation before. It just takes practice. And it took me, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. There was no one, you know, telling me like, there's no John version of me right now, like in the future saying, hey, you need to do these things. Um, but what was really cool was I was getting um, this, uh, this feeling that I was starting to get interactions with my spirit guides and that they were coming through in like colors and then sometimes in like maybe a word, like maybe a whole meditation for 10 minutes and I get one word. Like, that's cool. <laughs> like I was, I was good with that. And so I take that, that word um, or, or, you know, one or two words and then just create a song out of it. Um, and trying to remember, I was trying to remember back the other day so I can show you just now, like, what, what was maybe the first um, uh, word or words that came through? And there was the song, and I don't remember the, the entirety of it, but um, one of the first songs I did was called like the monkey in me or making the monkey out of me. Um, and it was all about just, it was, very, it was humorous and it's a very silly video with me jumping around like a monkey in, in a green screen. Um, but it was like, really starting to acknowledge all the different dimensions of me. So let me, let me give that a go just now. So what I'm going to do is just place my hand on my heart and I'm just going to ask um, the universe. I'm just going to ask for a little bit more than the word, than the word monkey. So just, if you wish, you can join me as well. If you've taken three deep breaths into the nose, nice and deep. Hold and breathe out what no longer serves our highest good. Breathe in through the nose, nice and deep. And release the stress and fear and anxiety of a lifetime. <sighs> Breathe in through the nose, nice and deep. And release any low vibration energies or entities. <sighs> And guides, what messages do you have for me for the highest good of all to help raise vibrations? Thank you. So I was just hearing, like, because I'd, I'd had the word monkey in my mind, and um, they were just saying to me, expanding on that, saying the monkey is like the representation of the inner child of you. It's like the fun aspect of you and, and to really embrace that and to, and to let that, that come out. And what a beautiful way to start my journey in 2017, because yeah, I've done lots of monkeying around since. So let's, let's try a little bit of that just now. Let's try and turn it into song. So what I'm going to do is I just have my guitar plugged in. Um, and, uh, most of this is like just connected into my phone so you can hear it. And what I'm going to do is just take those words and just try maybe for like 10 or 20 seconds and see like how far I can get with the song. Inside of me It's this beautiful little child It's the monkey Oh, me Heaven for every day Yes, I know it's time to let my inner child out to play. <laughs> I had no idea where that was going. Um, that was a lot of fun. And you like the reason I do this live is because I wanted to like bring that pressure and those nerves to me that are more similar to what you may experience if you're trying to get yourself out of writer's block. And I'm not trying to say that that was the best song in the world, <laughs> but this is the next thing that really helped me. Like 
the why and then leading into perfectionism. So I, I realized quickly that I could, um, I could start creating songs, um, and I could start doing them like weekends. And I realized that the most important thing was just to, um, just to create it, like have a start and have an end. I uh, try and keep a rhythm, but it was most importantly about just finishing like the start to end and then worrying about whether, you know, allowing the judgment, like almost like suspending self judgment. And, and so that's what I did. I, um, Oh, look at my, my guitar pick. This is what my daughter got me, uh, for, um, for Christmas. There's, there's all these different ones. There's even one with, with patch, our dog. <laughs> so yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, it was super fun because I I realized that to me songs are gifts. So by that I mean that um I asked for inspiration. So I asked the universe or I asked my spirit guides or whatever your beliefs are. Um I asked for song lyrics and they're given to me as a gift. Like that inspiration is a gift to me. And then so I don't want to throw that gift away. Um I don't just want to say, you know what? Thank you so much for those song lyrics. Uh, thank you for those, um, for those gifts. I'll just chuck it away. Like, cause I just don't have the confidence to, you know, or I'm not brave enough to, to step into it. And so that's what I would do. Um, I would begin to realize that every song was a gift and I didn't want to throw it away. I didn't want to just, you know, chuck it in the, you know, often digital, uh, recycling bin and just say, you know, that was rubbish. <laughs> like that monkey song. I don't know what you thought of it, but I felt like, you know, with a, with a little bit of practice, maybe there's something there. And most importantly for me, the why is connected to the perfectionism, right? Which is if I had, for instance, in, in that, and I feel like there's a great example with the monkey song is that if you, if you think about lyrics, they're all about bringing out the inner child. And when we we're children and we wanted to create and play and, and have fun and, and, and mess around, we would just do so freely. Like we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't worry like whether the play that we had was perfect. Um, we just, you know, had fun and, and messed around. I was about to swear. <laughs> um, what the reality is that as adults, we kind of program and condition ourselves and our subconscious is like constantly there telling us like, oh, you know, you're not good enough or, you know, you, you can't create well enough or, um, you know, everything sounds the same. Like, I mean, these are the things that would go through my mind 15 years. And you know what? Sometimes they still do. Um, yeah. And if I, if I list them off, there are things like um, uh, that song sounds exactly like the last song or another song. Um you know, your, your voice isn't warmed up enough. That recording isn't good enough. Um, the, the lyrics are, you know, patchy or they're like, um, they, they have, you know, they're, they're missing rhythm and gaps. Uh, I never write my music down. So it was, it was just like, um, all, all these strange things that, uh, you know, that happened that would go through my mind is negative self-talk. And you think like, imagine if that was your friend, right? Imagine if you walked into like their music studio and they started playing something and you started saying these things to them, it would be awful. <laughs> and yet we do it to ourselves. And, and I was doing it to myself. Um, hello to uh, those of you who have joined and soul heart opening says, what is good to make um, funny voices while singing? Oh yes, I love making funny voices. I'll, I'm going to do that in a second. Thank you for that prompt. Um, so yes, lesson one: like have a space where you can create, whether it's writing, you know, singing, dancing, making music, whatever you do. And then the second thing is consider your inspiration as a gift and make that space to receive. Um, what you know, what some people do is they go for walks in nature. Some some people use different substances. Uh, I don't, but uh, and I don't recommend you do, but just acknowledging that some people use that for inspiration. Um, really anything, uh, you know, breath work, uh, anything that gets you out of your, you know, shakes off that kind of negative self-talk and negative energy. Um, and the other thing that people do, um, I've seen like uh, people do is like before you create any content, 
get yourself into like a high vibration, dance and sing your ass off to your favorite song, you know, um, jump around the place, yeah, make some funny noises, like whatever you want to do that's going to help you, that you really enjoy, do that first. And then when you go into the challenge, it becomes so much easier. It really helps bridge that gap. And you often find a lot of the energy like bleeds over like that positive energy, just like the negative energy, you know, from your stressful day could bleed into your song so can the positive energy and it can be you can override it and be much more fun um so yeah let's talk a bit about a uh, bit more about perfectionism and uh i love the idea thank you so heart opening of um of making some funny voices so let's try some of that I would just do that forever. <laughs> um, but that's a lot of fun. Um, and I found that also great fun, right? Like if you want to get away from perfectionism, a great way is to, to explore and have fun. Because when you, when you do that, you're stepping into a world where perfectionism and, you know, con- perfectionism, is, perfectionism is also often about control. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so when you think of, perfectionism like i i did not think that through maybe clearly to you i did not think through those that uh, that singing and those noises um but and so if i just said i'm gonna make the perfect you know funny voices um it would be really really hard i'm not even sure what they all are i don't really know what i'm capable of i have like an increasingly better understanding of my my vocal range but you know, I wasn't really warmed up for that. Um, there's all these reasons why that should fail, right, or could fail. And yeah, at the same time, um, it, I feel like perfectionism is all about like understanding your expectations. And if your expectations are like really, really high, like everything's going to be so smooth and perfect, and every song that I do will have zero mistakes, versus the reality of what you're actually going to create. Um, there was, you could argue in that funny voices bit i just did how could you make mistakes there there's no mistakes in that like there's when you're when you're playing around and truly exploring you can't make mistakes because it is it is intuitive it is um improvising and it is just exploring this you know infinite magic of this universe and that's within us and and all all around us and so that really helped me a lot with perfectionism um and so if I, if I explain a bit more about my, my journey of perfectionism, um, or should I say breaking free from it, was back in 2017, I started doing songs at, at weekends. And those weekend songs um, became a bit more frequent. I started doing like a Saturday song and a Sunday song because um, I really enjoyed it. And I would do, I'd maybe spend like two and a half hours or something. And I remember like, I'm I'm married with 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 two kids and um and a dog patch and uh I I remember and a full-time job at that time and I remember thinking I need to like you know have a balance and so what I'd do is I'd say I'd spend no more than 2 hours in in the studio um and so that was that was really helpful because it allowed me to like kind of sandbox that time and it also put this, it gave me like this really safe space. Like I, you know, I, ch- I sat down with my wife and said, look, like, how should I do this? Like, I'm, I love this. I love like going in my studio and like a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning. And I really want to, to, to protect this time for me. What's the best thing to do? And we, we chatted about our routines and how we could or couldn't accommodate it and when, and when I could and couldn't be flexible. And, um, so I, end, I, I changed the, the, the patterns in my life. Like I stopped drinking alcohol in part so that I could get up at 5 a.m. for a run in the morning and then I could do my music. And that was like a massive game changer for me. 
um, because it, it then changed my ability to start creating every day. And I think it was early 20, um, I think it's early 2019, is that right? That I started, well, I, I read The Fearless Life Guide by MJ at All to Love. Hello to MJ if you're watching. Um, brilliant book is available on Amazon and it really helped me step to that fearlessness. Like there's, there's a lot of bravery in all the things that I've rambled on about so far, you know, through the, like choosing the mission about why you want to create and then creating a safe space for you to physically and spiritually like create. And then the third thing of like perfectionism, you know, if you really want to take on like your negative inner voice, like these shadows that we have, the, you know, the lack of self-love that you, that you sometimes feel, then you have to be brave. Like you have to be brave and step through them. You have to face them and, and feel them and, and acknowledge them, you know, and see them for the inner shadows that they are. And that, that book really helped me like get started. And so then I started writing songs every day. Um, and to a large extent, I've never really stopped. And on that journey, uh, just before the, um, the pandemics, um, I was, I can't remember what album I was at, something like tw I'd written maybe 20 albums in, in those few years. And then things really stepped up because what I could do is I could, I was at home with my home studio and I could go through the same like daily routine, like get up in the morning at 5 a.m. and do a song. And what, what that meant for me was that I um, could start doing a song every day, an album every couple of weeks, and and then last year I I got the world record for the most albums digitally released, uh, which was 110. Um, and I kind of knew on that journey that this was like a, it was it was a lot of songs very fast. Um, and you know you hear rumors of what other artists have created, like uh, Prince and um, Dolly Parton and uh, Paul McCartney, like many. Artists have written into the thousands, um, and 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 Buckethead, the guitarist, like he's he's up there, um, and so yeah. Last year, I went, I just went through the process of applying. It took about six months, especially if you want to do use the free um, service, and uh, I got my little uh, certificate. It's up on up on the wall. I'd, I'd twist the camera around, but you probably won't see it. <laughs> um, but you can look me up if you're really interested on the, the Guinness World Record website. And then, I, uh, and it continues, right? So I'm, I, I released just last week, was it, or the week before, uh, an album, 143. And where's it all going? You know, and, and so I get like loads of common questions, like, "Oh, John, like, um, why, <laughs> why did you create so many songs?" And and it shifted for me. Like my original mission was like really focusing on the, um, the the creative process and helping raise people's vibrations. And then over that time in recent years, my skills and abilities like started to expand out because every day I've been working on increasing my, um, you know, ability to connect with higher dimensions of me and my guides, um, that I'm able to, to channel more of those lyrics in. So when they come in, I, I say them out loud, uh, in my, in my meditation and, and then I, I don't write them down. I just go in and, and I create a song and over over about 900 songs that shifted from being um my life began to shift from being a musician first and foremost in in my mind <laughs> um to then start to realize that there's all these other abilities growing like my psychic abilities and then i stepped into uh doing like learning my own energy healing uh which i now call quantum energy healing um and and like clearing people's negative energies and entities and the rest of it, the breadth of it is, is a long story. Um, but that was really beautiful. Like somewhere in this list of like things that you can do to, you know, break through your writer's block is, is a lot about remembering who you are. And my guides continually tell me this. And I, I, I keep asking myself, do I remember, do I remember now? If I remembered like all my past lives and, and all my gifts. Um, and I feel like it's a continued journey of, of remembrance to remember that you're, you're equal to me. We're all equal together and we're all capable of, you know, expressing our unique abilities in, in our own beautiful and unique ways. And we're being called at this time, especially in this year and, and happy new dragon year. Um, 
we're being called to to help each other to reflect out to the rest of, of humanity, every living thing on the planet and across the universe, that each one of us are unique and individual and we're we're beautiful, sovereign, divine creators. And so when you dim your light, like when those times that you have that inner self-talk and say, my song's not good enough, you know, you, you're shutting that down. You're shutting that unique expression down. And we're being called to, to express ourselves, you know, to, to come out into the physical world and the digital world and both and really share like what are our, our superpowers. And, and just like me, you know, for a long time, I thought my, my superpower was more about music and that's definitely one of them. And I, I love, I, I love doing music. Music for me is, as you know, now second or third in, in my list of superpowers. And I, I still use music for fun. Like I, I love it. I love doing it each day. And so that's also a beautiful discovery is that on journeys where we're, where we're, we're just, you know, very boldly and bravely step into this, this constant um, ability to create, you realize that you're even more powerful and even more gifted and in lots of different dimensions than perhaps you originally um, knew when you first set out. And so I feel like we're we're coming close. If you have any questions uh, before before I end this, uh, let me know. Um, or if you have any requests for future videos, also let me know. Um, I would love love us to end on on a little bit of a short song. And um, yeah, I'd really love to to just echo some of the the themes about self love, self empowerment, self care. And one thing I didn't touch on is you don't need to do this every day. Like put your self care first. I learned that lesson very harshly last summer. Um, and I'm about to take a break as well. I'm, I'm taking four days off. Uh, it might not sound like a lot, but uh, when you're doing something almost every day, um, it, it is a big break. I also always take Sundays off, whether I've posted a song or not. I don't create songs uh, and post them on, on a Sunday now. And that helps me like have that kind of stop break, that, that fire break in, in creation. Okay, let me create a song. Many times I've asked myself, where is this going? So many times I've asked myself, what am I doing? And then I take a breath and breathe into my heart. I feel this love now. There's something divine speaking to me There's something divine calling me We're all creators Just listen and breathe Open your heart to receive We're all creators we're co-creators of this magic This universe is a reflection of the hearts of you and me So many questions I've asked myself during this process but when I was a child, I never questioned my play my imagination, exploring the castles in the sky. I fight in dragons, it would catch my eye. These sparkles, we're all creators. Ooh, so listen with an open heart to receive all oh, that you need. We are creators. Ooh, so listen with your heart. You'll get all you need. Just open up and receive.
was a lot of fun. <laughs> just open our hearts up and receive. It's simple, right? Maybe I could have saved like a whole, uh, whatever this has been, an hour, I'm not sure, uh, of, uh, of live stream and video, just saying, you just need to open up your hearts. Um, but I feel like it's fine saying these things, um, but it's even better to give us all human examples. So, thank you so much for coming along today, for listening, for watching in the replay, for coming live. Um, it's been a lot of fun creating this. And yeah, sometimes I oversimplify and underplay my ability to write songs each day so freely. And it's now, I'm not sure, like 2,300 songs. And I know that 15 years or more, like 20 years ago, I would have loved that ability and yet yeah, i always had that inclining inkling that um perhaps that would happen one day that i would step into this infinite universe of, of creativity and so i hope this video helps encourage you to whatever your passion is to step into your infinite creativity and thank you so much for watching i'm sending my love from scotland take care love you <laughs>